And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Zoe Aphelios. But we're playing a different version of Zoe Aphelios than what you're probably used to. Probably used to say, seeing this with like Bilgewater and other stuff like that. But I'm playing Zoe Aphelios with um, Freljord. And uh, here's the reason why. is because basically I want to play like an elusive buff deck with Freljord with Sparklefly. With like these different aggro decks running around. I want to be able to buff up Sparklefly. And so we have Aphelios' Moon Weapon, um, the Crescendum, that gets the two-cost follower from the deck, and we can use that to put Sparklefly into play. Or our other two-drop that we're really built around, Starlet Seer. Because you all know that I've always really liked Starlet Seer decks. I think Starlet Seer is a really fun card to play. And so these are going to be our two two-drops that we're going to be able to put in with Aphelios' Moon Weapon, either Starlet Seer or Sparklefly. And if Star you know, sometimes Starlet Seer is going to be buffing up a two-drop as like one of our top allies, and then the Moon Weapon will put that into play. It won't happen that often, but that will happen sometimes. And we could get a really buffed up 2-drop. Um, and of course, with Aphelios making all the Moon Weapons, um, you know we have more and more spells with all those Moon Weapons. And of course, the more spells you have, the better for Starlet Seer. So that works there too. Um, so that should be pretty good. And plus, Freljord is a region that protects... The champions really well. We have Elixir of Irons and Troll Chance in here, and that should help really help protect Zoe and Aphelios for cheap. And so, um, you know, we're going to be built around those two champions with those. Plus, we're going to have our top end, we're going to have Battle Fury, and putting a Battle Fury on, um, on you know, like a Sparkle Fly could be pretty awesome. I got Mentor the Stones in here that can buff up either Zoe or Sparkle Fly. So, like, if we can have Mentor the Stones buff up the Sparkle Fly, and then, uh, you know, the Mentor of the Stones dies, it gets the gems. Gems are, of course, awesome with Starless Seer, uh, but then also awesome with Aphelios and Veil Temple and all that kind of stuff. So it's great with all that kind of stuff. But we can use the gems on the Sparklefly to make the Sparklefly our most our largest unit, uh, the the uh, strongest ally, I guess. And so that then then our Veil Temple, you know, like if we have Veil Temples in here, how they like keep buffing up stuff. Like y'all y'all know, you played your Aphelios Veil Temple decks, how you can start getting like one thing like really big. Well, what if that one thing that's really big is a sparkle fly? <laughs> that sounds pretty awesome. And so that's what we're kind of doing with this deck. Um, you know, we'll have like some Bastions for some protection. We got interaction with Flash Freeze, Hush, Harsh Winds. Um, and then even a Field of Rush to put 10-10 Zoe, 10-10 Aphelios into play. And of course, Aphelios can get can make the Moon Weapon of Lifesteal. Like if we're, if we're buffing stuff up with Starlet Seer and Mentor the Stones um, or Veil Temple and Battle Fury, Aph Aphelios giving them... Um, you know, Lifesteal, also awesome, or giving them Overwhelm, incredible as well. So that should all work pretty well. So that's kind of our that's kind of our deck. That's what we got going on. Let's see how it does here with Zoe Aphelios. Okay, so hopefully we have enough card advantage with our two champions. I don't have like a ton of invoke stuff, right? Like this kind of matchup, you'd want a lot more invoke cards than what I have. Um, I could see keeping Mentor the Stones, but Mentor the Stones pretty bad against Ice Shard. But growing something would be really nice. Veil Temple. Aphelios now dying to uh, the four the four mana deal two sweepers is a big deal. All right, so I think I'm going to play Starlet Seer on two and play nothing on three. And then play Veil Temple on four and be able to play the Aphelios after the Veil Temple to buff up this Aphelios. Yeah. Yeah, I think I just want the Veil Temple and play first. I don't want like the little damage things to be able to kill Aphelios. But I do you have Elixir of Iron now? Nothing escapes my watch. You can see the Debastian border. Hmm. Okay. So they definitely have some kind of uh area of effect damage in hand for sure that they were like holding on to these sentries and not wanting to play them right away. Oh, hey, what's that? Embrace the night, Aphelios. 
Playing the Zoe first to work towards leveling up Zoe. Yeah, two area effect things. Not as cool. We're going to be buffing stuff up. So I could play this dust to get like an extra uh, whatever thing in there, but... Ooh. An extra spell, but um, holding the dust makes it a little bit easier for me to get another moon weapon and help with the Veil Temple and stuff like that. Send him. If they play Go Hard, I'll be pretty sad. All right, that'll do. Because that's that's lethal right there. That's 18 damage. Do you think they expect it to die? <laughs> Whenever they played the gain gain four life, deal two to everything, and then ice shards, and then also had vengeance. Do you think they expected just to die? <laughs> Ooh, uh, Thresh Gnosis. Starless Seer is awesome. <laughs> I'm glad we have Starless Seers. Okay, so we have. Yeah, this, this is a pretty good combo. Um, I'll mulligan that card, but I kind of like the rest of this. I could see mulliganing the Duskbringer as well, but. We were peaceful. Oh, no, I'll keep it. We got our Mention of the Stone Sparkle Fly combo. No more hiding. Yeah, and so that can grow the Sparkle Fly. And so that then whenever we Veil Temple and start growing the strongest ally still, that's going to be the Sparkle Fly. Bad for the teeth, though. And of course, gems were great at getting the two spells for Veil Temple. No! I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. Alright, well, I definitely need to give this a gem to give it three health, three power. But this Sparklefly is going to have permanent vulnerability. This That spinner is awesome. Enter, traveler, and stop staring. If I've forgotten, then... I guess I should just use this. Yeah, because I ran out of cards. Should have just played one of those first. They could be at nine. I haven't played any... Like, have they even played a spell? I don't think they have. I can't remember any, like, spell they've played. The 
desert by my side. I must be known. Always forward. That's just like the wrong way to challenge. You should challenge you challenge that in front. That's the first card to challenge, not the last. That's just the best way to challenge for me. Why can't I cast this? Why can't I take Atrocity? I guess because it's... I mean, I've, I've always... We've always, like, taken Atrocity... Huh. I guess I can't take Atrocity. Can I take Atrocity up? Or no? There we go. Yeah, I guess they fixed it, or, you know, like, before you used to be able to do that. Like, once they play their spell like that, you could take it, but I guess you can't do that anymore. That's not how it used to be. Ooh. Elise Callista, not playing Azir, playing Callista instead. That's interesting. I wonder if Callista's better than Azir. We'll have to wait to find out. Don't really need the Spell Thief. I'll keep the rest. Again, I want to buff up this Sparklefly. Yeah, it's a solid deck. We're definitely, like, <laughs> we're playing Targon and we're playing Aphelios and Zoe, so our deck's going to be pretty good. Um, No, let's go Zoe. Because, like, yeah, we take two, but if I, I'm going to heal my Nexus for one anyway right here. Oh, Starlet's here? I have too many cards that I like that I want to play. So it only costs me one life to get the Zoe in play, create the super cool star chart, get it level up started. I really hope they don't level up Elise. Like, if I block here, and if they have, like, another Elise that makes two more spiders, then they get to level up Elise, and that's, like, that would make my life really bad. So I guess I just take an extra point of damage. Because a second Elise would make my life really bad. Purple? We shall pierce their treasonous ass. Buff up that sparkle fly. Sparkle fly getting buff. So that's why I did that, is I wanted to get the the thing on the sparkle fly. <sighs> a frenzied skitter. But why? So fearsome, fearsome, fearsome. This will be a good winter. I was hoping that maybe they'd be a little bit scared off from attacking with these, but the fact that they're not 
means something's probably up. So he's at seven. Oh, maybe I should have waited on playing this thing to level up the Zoe. Lame. Attack of the Sparkle Flies! So that levels up Callista. So Callista will attack and put Frenzied Scarer into play. But we do have a good amount of life. Card. They've never seen a trio like this Attack, before. give enemies minus two, minus zero this round. Alright, let's see if we get an Equinox or a stun card. Alright, Equinox. Oh, um, don't want to do any gems. I'll jump that thing up so that it can block. This would be a good winter. You won't suffer long. Our power is so good. Fly away while you can. Okay, let's see. Five, six, we block. Let's see. Four? Wait, no. Four, four, we block here. Five, six, I block here. This is me just going to 18. 18 still quite a bit. I'll just pass, see what happens. That's no I'll sleep just use flashers. This would be a good winter. Alright, that'll do. Our deck's pretty sweet. Oh yeah. Metagame. Ooh, Gnosis. It does seem like a good metagame for the one two elusive. Or sorry, the one two I mean it is elusive, but the lifesteal. Okay, Starlet Seer with Mentor of the Stones. That's a good start. No champions. Champions are always important. Let's get rid of this card. And I'm considering mulliganing the Mentor of the Stones also, just because I kind of want... So they're just Gnosis? Yeah, I mean, I do want champions. There's a champion. The desert by my side. Hmm. That's fine. Always forward. Alright. All right, so we, we don't have our, our Lifesteal 2-drop right now, which has made our life a lot easier against these aggressive decks. So that's going to be the thing, is looking for that card. Wow, what a hand. <laughs> All right, okay, I think this is the perfect hand. Five power on turn one, Curse Keeper on turn two, and then an additional ten power on turn three. 
yeah, that's that's got to be the perfect hand. Only a fool would enter battle of the pair. All right, so it looks like it's going to take the perfect yeah, the perfect hand to take us down. So that'll put me down to six. Yeah. Just thinking, like, if there's a way for me to, like, play Veil Temple and two spells next turn, and there's just really not. I need the zero mana card. By snow and stars. I need zero mana. Like either one of those. I, like I wanted the zero mana two one. Neither one of them got that for me. It's just game. No matter how I block, because these things grow whenever they kill stuff. Man, just a, a perfect hand. I guess I should have taken Moon Silver instead of the stun, the double stun. I should have taken the Moon Silver, because then the Moon Silver could have turned that 4 1 into costing 0 mana. Okay, so we'll see how we do against the normal Zoe Felio stack that other people play. Not a good opener. Sparklefly, I needed you last game. Where were you? Where were you? Boxtopus is a big, big problem. Looks like they have the... Like, if they have a Felios here, and yeah. Okay, good. Let's see if they have a Felios here. It'd be a big problem for us. Ooh. That card could be, could be good. All right, so that box was on top. I don't really have a good emote for that. We see through all. I should just attack for one first. Well, no, because we're going to get another two trump. May get another Sparkle Fly. Or could be a Starlet Seer. I'm doing this to just heal to heal the Ophelios, get it back to three health. Um. That's why I grabbed Severum and played that. Ooh, Bastion's a good one. Thank you. 
spreaders. Blessed by snow and stars. Kind of wanted to get another. Kind of wanted to get another grab a two drop out of my deck. We're gonna have something that's gonna be pretty big with the Starlet Seer and all these moon weapons we've been playing. Um, sure. That's fine. That's fine. I'm not, I can't really, like, kill Zoe, right? So, like, what the biggest worry right now is that Zoe just kind of chills for a while and levels up. My spirit shines. That's going to be the, the larger worry. Has their fate, so, it's, it's four damage. We easily heal our Nexus. I'm not blocking with anything. We will just take it. Very easy for us to heal that Nexus damage. Plus, I like them having like a full board, right? So they want to play more stuff. They're just going to have to get rid of these things anyway. Um, Battle Fury not the best in this matchup with all of the... With all the hushes. I don't know how many hushes they play in. They're probably playing more than zero. Our path is fixed. Now, we must walk it. Probably more than zero. This will be a good winter. I still gotta play another spell. Lame. <laughs> okay, the worst possible Starlet Seer hit and the worst possible unit to draw. Uh, I guess that's fair. So we'd already been doing pretty well anyway. The worst possible. A path opens before us. Why stunning Zoe? I don't know, because stunning any of these other things just don't matter. There's not a good reason to stun any of these things. Yeah, I know they just throw away one of these things. Alright, maybe I should have done a little bit of blocking, but maybe not. Really? Oh, right. It turns into a 4-3. Okay. Well, that makes more sense. This would be a good winter. It's not a 7-6 anymore. That's right. I was kind of expecting like maybe like a hush on one of these things and block one of these things. But obviously I love getting hush out of their hand when I'm chilling with Battle Fury over here. So I'm very happy to see hush gone. I don't want the 8-mana Celestial Obliterate Everything. So they have, what, four cards in hand? Okay, they've, they've cast one of these Celestials so far. So they have... So they have a super expensive Celestial and a 4 through 6 Celestial. Both still. Lame. Take the card I didn't want them to have. All right, looks like I'll just stun one of these other things. One of these non-Zoe cards. They forced us to choose death or the blade. My stuff big. Stuff big, your stuff small.
Gravitum. This would be a good winter. It's a good winter. Great, great card for them. It's just not worth my Bastion. Saving saving Aphelios is just... Aphelios is too important. I need to keep Bastion to save Aphelios, especially we know they have another um, expensive Celestial card. They can definitely have, like, more Obliterates. We, you know, like, they still have, like, a, a 4 through 6 cost and a 9 plus cost um, Celestial card. But again, so they could have, like, the 6 mana Obliterate. They could have the 9 mana Obliterate. I have to save Bastion for Aphelios. We're gonna get some moon weapons. Um, I don't. I have what one Starless here left in my deck. I guess let's get the overwhelm. Be able to give this Dustbringer overwhelm, I guess. All right, let's see what we got. Mm, another Felios. Maybe I should target the Zoe. Give Zoe overwhelm. Honestly, maybe I should. Create the super cool star chart. All right, just two cards in hand. I do have a backup of Felios now in my hand. Oh, they still get the Paddle Star? And the Zoe in their deck? Lame. Should be game. Avengers, extend your hand. Blessed by snow and stars. It's our time! With the knight's embrace. These eyes see all! So this is 24 overwhelm. There we go. Alright, 4 and 1. The Freljord is underrated. I'm telling y'all. And you said uh, you believe that we would win with this deck. Yes. If I if I'm playing Zoe if I'm playing Zoe and Aphelios, I I'm very confident I'm going to be winning. These these champions are too good. <laughs> we need to go back to like our, our regular 
Vladimir decks. Play some more Jarvan. <laughs> These champions are too good. It makes makes the game too easy. We need to play some more Lulu Nautilus. All right, so we ended up 4-1 with the Zoe Felios. We really only lost that one game that our opponent just had the most ridiculous possible first three turns. You know, attack token on turn one, attack, put five power into play on turn one, attack for five, and then curse keeper on turn two, and then an additional 10 power on turn three to go along with the five power they already had on turn one. So 15 total power there attacking on turn three. That was the only game that we lost. Um, and even like that game, if I had a sparkle fly, who knows, but I didn't have a sparkle fly. Um, so this deck felt awesome. Like it felt really good. Like both Zoe and Aphelios are incredibly good champions. I really liked the sparkle fly and just being able to grow sparkle fly. Like sparkle fly mentor the stones was really good, especially against all these aggressive decks. Sometimes aggressive decks get under your Zoe Aphelios deck and sparkle fly really helps with that. But even starless here, like starless here was awesome, right? Cause we just play so many spells. Zoe, Zoe gets the spells. Aphelios gets the spells. We play so many spells. We get all the extra mana with veil temple. And so since we play so many spells, Starless here keeps granting that top ally plus one plus one and makes that thing really, really big. And then we have like Battle Fury making stuff really big. That's always cool. Yeah, this deck, this deck was good. And then, of course, the other great thing about Freljord is these two combat tricks that are incredibly cheap and are incredibly efficient. Elixir of Iron at one mana and a Troll Chant at two mana. Both of those are amazing at protecting our champions and our sparkle flies and everything like that and then you get you know mentor the stones get all those gems and those gems are great with starless here yeah i mean this this all just worked really well so i mean i yeah like i you know a lot of people play with zoe Aphelios play bilge water because you get boxtopus and and yes boxtopus is a great two drop but honestly i loved all the stuff that we had here i think that Frel you know bilge water doesn't really offer anything else but freljord here gives you great great uh combat tricks elixir of iron troll chant it uh, gives you some good answers against really big stuff. Flash Freeze, Harsh Winds. It gives you just like a, a random I win card with Battle Fury. It gives you a huge um, big threat against the slower decks with Feel the Rush. It gives you so much stuff. And then Starless Seer buffs up everything. <clears throat> so yeah, I think this, this deck worked out really, really well. All right, so anyway, those of y'all watching later on YouTube, uh, give this one a try. If you're somebody who likes playing Zoe Aphelios decks, I highly recommend this version here with Freljord. Um, and Zoe and Aphelios are such are so good that you can you can make a good Zoe and Aphelios deck with any region. You really can. Um, Ionia would maybe be the toughest one, but you can still do it. Um, and uh, yeah, because you could go just maybe I guess focus on Elusives with Ionia. Ionia would be the toughest one, but uh, you know you can play kind of any region, and that's what I I wanted to showcase. I wanted to showcase like a different region that nobody's really talking about, nobody else plays but really show you how um, these champions are amazing. And uh, here's just another another great version of the deck. So you want to play something a little different and you want to you know, have the most powerful champions in the game, but play something that nobody else is playing. Here you go. This is a great deck. All right. So those of y'all on YouTube, hit that like button. Leave those comments. If you do try it out yourself, uh, let me know how it goes for you. Let me know, um, you know, if you... If you're enjoying the deck, anything that's great about it, anything you think that maybe needs to change, anything you struggle with, anything like that. I love hearing it, the, that feedback. I appreciate it. All right, but that's it here for Zoe Aphelios. So like always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.